My name is Eldar Amsero, I'm founder of Well. Mm -hmm. Well is uh, Airbnb of healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a platform enabled by blockchain. Uh, and just like with Airbnb, you uh, Airbnb host entrusts a stranger with mm -hmm. keys to his house. We help patients entrust keys to their health, to their life, really. Uh, and then we also solve problems of cross-border payments and other uh, problems that blockchain is perfect for in healthcare. Yeah, so three years ago when I started Well, the reason I started it is because of my own personal experience as a patient. Um, I broke my leg and then I couldn't find physiotherapy to rehab and so I actually rebroke it, which was very traumatic. And as a serial entrepreneur, I saw a problem to be solved. Mm -hmm. So I started a healthcare company. Okay. And the more successful I got, the more uh, problems with payment and some other issues I had. Okay. And so about a year ago, I started looking at blockchain as a perfect solution to solve these problems. And that's, that's when I started looking at blockchain, studying it, and about six months or so ago, we started the process of, um, actually longer than that ago, of you know, writing the white paper and preparing for the ICO. So Korea is actually a perfect uh, market for what we're doing. Um, Korea, you know, especially you know, Gangnam, is basically a mecca of plastic surgery. Uh, so, and all these plastic surgeons and dentists uh, that do medical tourism, they're basically one, one doctor for one clinic. Mm. So they're great doctors, but they often need help with accounting, marketing. And so a platform that we can provide for them could be a perfect solution for that. Both, all of the above. So uh, marketing, so for example, let's say there are Chinese mm -hmm. patients that want to come to Korea mm -hmm. and get plastic surgery. Uh, if it's over $10,000, mm -hmm. they cannot bring cash, right? It's yeah. illegal. Uh, and paying online is a very cumbersome process. It mm -hmm. involves lots of fees. And so blockchain is actually a perfect solution for that. Okay. Um, and then as far, th and so that involves both payment, accounting and marketing, right? Uh, and then some other aspects that we can also help doctors with, with our platform. So we're talking to some uh, charitable and government institutions about integrated with integrating with their uh, medical records mm -hmm. so another aspect that we we can also provide is that for that patient mm -hmm. that comes to Korea them storing and having the ability to provide their medical records to yeah. the doctor that they're being seen by yeah. uh, and blockchain is actually perfect for that we don't want to build a solution mm -hmm. itself but we want to integrate with the solutions that exist so there is a system being built in Korea that we would love to integrate with because it basically, um, you know, would be uh, would cover all of the uh, Korean uh, citizens. Uh, and there are similar um, records, record platforms, mm -hmm. medical record platforms that also exist that we're talking to in Africa and some other countries, and integrating also in America as well. So, uh, yes, uh, it's, a, it's a longer term plan. So as far as countries like Korea, where patients already are covered by government insurance, for example, uh, it involves more medical tourism. Um, but, you know, event, we, ha we have a telehealth solution, for example. Telehealth right now, as far as insurance is involved, is not legal in Korea. But I, I'm confident that it will be, you know, shortly. And so 
uh, if we w once we integrate with a record provider and telehealth is legal, we can be a technology provider for people to use their insurance on our platform and, and get treatment and get telehealth treatment as well. Telehealth, yeah, telehealth is basically, you know, in a narrow sense, is basically just a video conference with mm -hmm. a doctor, but in a broader sense, it's virtualization of healthcare. Just like we don't go to store anymore to mm -hmm. buy stuff, we go to Amazon or Alibaba or other, you know, on Rakuten or other online platforms. Yes. Uh, similarly, you know, Naver in case of Korea. Um, similarly, I believe that healthcare is getting virtualized. And so, uh, you know, telehealth is growing and booming in the United States. Uh, it's actually the fastest growing segment of healthcare. It was legalized in Russia, and we we're talking to, you know, uh, Russian hospitals as well, mm -hmm. clinics. Uh, so, yeah, so I, th I believe that it, it, once it is approved, it will be very quick adoption. Yeah, it's not all be all and some things you will have to, I mean, you can't, you know, although there is a robot that can actually do uh, dental surgery now remotely. Oh, okay. A doctor remotely controlled the robot and did a de dental surgery. Uh, so I think, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue where, right, for example, there's a watch, we're talking to a watch provider about a partnership and they, ha they can measure glucose level with 80% accuracy. So that's pretty amazing. I mean, it's not clinical standard yet. So, so yeah, you're absolutely right. It may be perfect for uh, like skin doctor, yeah. where you can just show the doctor your, you know, whether he's looking directly at you or through camera, yeah. it's pretty much the same thing. He can determine what that thing is mm -hmm. and then order a cream or whatever treatment you need uh, through online pharmacy, for example. Um, radiology, some of the other things are perfect for a remote, for a remote, uh, you know, patient mm -hmm. doctor interaction. But some things you definitely need to go to a doctor for, for sure. You would order online, mm -hmm. and then it would be fulfilled at the pharmacy of your choice, and you just stop by. Uh, and it's nearby and pick it up basically and depending on the country you know in some countries you it can be shipped to you mm -hmm. like in America for example that's legal in some countries a pharmacist needs to deliver it to you directly like Korea so then you just go and pick it up So uh, it, it would be, yeah, it would be basically a reputational kind of uh, threshold. We will want only doctors that are, that have great reputation, just like Uber or Airbnb. And the ones that have below average reputation, we, won't, we will not want to be on our platform. And then it will, one great thing is that the pricing will be completely transparent, which is not the case often. Uh, so you will be able to choose. Uh, and then there are probably going to be some uniform pricing. So, for example, if it's a certain type of service in a certain type of region, uh, doctors will agree to provide it at a certain type of price that is uniform. Just like, you know, again, with Uber, for example, when you order Uber. Yeah, absolutely. So we are uh, in pre-sale so-called pre-sale, so we, uh, for another month. Uh, and then the crowd sale, the ICO starts on April 16th and runs through May 15th. Uh, as far as use of funds, it's gonna be used to grow our network, uh, develop a blockchain solution to make sure that the payment is completely frictionless and improve our applications, you know, mobile applications, web applications for uh, easy interaction between doctor and patient. So uh, we, what we say to people is we, we want, join it, mm -hmm. use it, grow it. Mm -hmm. So join meaning 
come participate in our ICO. Yes. Use it, meaning use it for your health. Mm -hmm. uh, and then grow it means the more people join it and use it, the more value the token will have yeah. and uh, it will grow. So that's, that's the plan is to execute and provide value to our, our participants. Mm -hmm. And as we provide the value, they will join and it will increase in value. So our, one of our noble goals is to save one million lives over the next five years. One million, uh, one million lives, yeah. So it sounds very ambitious. Uh, there are 250,000 deaths in the United States alone uh, due to um, medical errors. It's a third leading cause of death. So if you extrapolate it to globally and then you add non-treatment and uh, also misdiagnosis, it's literally millions of, I, I would probably argue it's maybe number one cause of death yeah. globally. And so we have, for example, charitable mission where we want to give access to our platform absolutely free to charitable organizations to connect doctors with patients in countries that have no access to patient care, uh, such as you know countries in Africa, for example. Mm. Uh, so that's, that's our number one, that's, that's our noble goal and I think uh, as we accomplish it, it will also help grow our, our platform. That's right. So, we, so it's actually telehealth platform is perfect to connect yes. psychologists with mm -hmm. patients, mm -hmm. both via telehealth and phone calls. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a, a even less expensive layer of secure messaging. Yeah. Which, is, which could be used uh, for suicide prevention, for example. And uh, that's actually a, a perfect user case for our platform, uh, both for, you know, on the charitable basis and on the basis of you know, employers, for example, or others employing our platform for that purpose.